Tonight on News Channel 3, an all new episode of 2020, taking a closer look at the Kristen Smart case. Smart was a Cal Poly freshman who disappeared after a party in 1996. More than two decades later, her killer, Paul Flores, was finally found guilty of first degree murder in a Monterey County courtroom. Joining us now to talk about tonight's episode of 2020 is Chief National Correspondent Matt Gutman. Hi, Matt. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Elise. We've covered this case here on the Central Coast extensively over the years, from the disappearance mm. to the murder trial itself. In your reporting, what was something new that you learned, especially given this 25-year-long case? I think one of the most impressive things is the extent to which the cadaver dogs were important. Um, first, that there were four cadaver dogs in that dorm at Cal Poly who all alerted on the same trash can basically at the same time, right? So one after another, they came in. Nobody knew what they were looking for. They all alerted in the same trash can that had been in Paul Flores' room. Um, and yet, and these are human remain dogs, right? So they are trained specifically to sniff out the remains of a human. So someone who had died had been in and around or their remains had been in that trash can. And yet that wasn't enough for law enforcement to come up with an indictment, to charge Paul Flores at the time. And then you have to fast forward um, more than 20 years, uh, 25 years, to the next time that they think that they found something that was very important. That was under Ruben Flores' deck, right? And so they go there. Um, there is a spot that cadaver dogs are looking for. They sniff out human rem remains. They don't know exactly what it is. They then get teams with ground-penetrating radar to survey it. They dig it up. They can't conclusively tie it to Crispin Smart. But this really is the nail in the coffin for Paul Flores. This is the one piece of evidence that indicates he knew what was going on. There were human remains in the place where he had lived, along with his father, who was not convicted, was charged, but not convicted, acquitted. Um, and this is what got investigators the big break in the case that they absolutely needed, and as you guys know, had been looking for um, and from various agencies for so many years. That's right. Law enforcement was so dogged in their attempt to try to solve this case. Did you uncover any techniques or technology that they used in the case to help them come to this conclusion? I mean, obviously, the ground penetrating radar is something that has been used in, is being used increasingly in solving um, so-called cold cases. Um, it helps people figure out what is uh, six seven, sometimes even deeper feet beneath the surface. Um, and that working in conjunction with some of the oldest technology we have, which are uh, canines who are working to smell something um, using, uh, you know, the most incredibly uh, sensitive sensors in the world, which are their snouts, um, is, it was pretty interesting. And, you know, in terms of technology, they also relied on, you know, podcasters, right? This is a new type of technology that has emerged in which citizen journalists or citizen investigators get involved in a case and bring up new witnesses. And Matt, you've been a journalist for such a long time. We've watched you covering all kinds of murder cases. What about this case surprised you, if anything? You know, I remember Elise being in high school, graduating high school, going to my first year in college in 1996 and hearing about this blonde, tall young woman who disappeared in this far off remote college, I'm from the East Coast, in California, and people talked about it, and it was scary. And then there were two other women who disappeared at Cal Poly. Um, obviously that was unrelated, that was a, a serial killer. Um, but this is a story that has spanned basically three decades, and 2020 has been working on it since the 90s, and this final, installment, if you will, of this two hour documentary is the culmination of so many years of work by so many different producers from 2020 and ABC News and me and the people I've been working with to put together what we think is the most holistic, holistic, conclusive um, and inclusive story about what happened to Kristen Smart and how she, her family and others and swashbuckling podcasters managed to finally get the person responsible in handcuffs, carcerated, and then, of course, convicted and facing life in prison. 
Matt, thank you so much for diving so deep into this story. And I know that a lot of people here on the Central Coast will be watching. Thank you so much for joining us. And you can catch tonight's you, episode Liz. of 2020 on Kristen Smart at 9 o'clock right here on News Channel 3. It'll also be available on Hulu starting tomorrow.